Merhaba arkadaşlar. Bu videoda Viyana'da yaptığım bir sunumun tekrarını yapacağım. Bana e-mail atanlar oldu sunumu acaba izleme şansımız var mı diye. Orada bir kayıt alınmıştı ama elime henüz geçmedi. Onun için zaten çok da uzun bir sunum değil. Burada tekrar kaydedip YouTube'a koymaya karar verdim. Ancak sunumu İngilizce hazırladığım için tekrar İngilizce yapmaya karar verdim. Daha anlaşılır olacağını da düşünüyorum. Onun için şimdi İngilizceye geçeceğim. İyi izlemeler. All right, this is a presentation that I've given in Vienna EGU 2022, and it is a talk about the origins of homochirality. So this is Furkan, and I'm a physics PhD student at Harvard University, and I work on origins of life, specifically the origins of homochirality. As you're presenting in a different short format, I'll try something new and explain my work through a series of questions, similar to a journalist. So I will first begin with the definition of chirality. Chirality is a geometric property and objects are said to be chiral if their mirror images are distinguishable from each other. We can, for instance, take screws and we are actually familiar with many chiral objects in our daily lives. Screws are right-handed usually and if you turn them clockwise, they advance forward. So this is just a geometrical property of matter. However, chirality is also present in chemistry and many biologically interesting molecules are chiral. Amino acids, sugars, RNA, DNA are all chiral objects. However, life is extremely picky when it comes to chirality. It selectively uses left-handed amino acids and right-handed sugars. And this behavior is omnipresent in all living systems from bacteria to humans. And this is what we call the biological homochirality. So far, so good. However, the mystery is that we don't know what triggered the symmetry breaking. What is the physical reason behind this feature of life on Earth? This is one of the biggest questions, not just in biology, but in all sciences. So in my talk, I will offer a solution to this problem and introduce spin polarized electrons as agents that can trigger this chiral imbalance. I will explain the mechanism and put things in a plausible geochemical context available on prebiotic Earth. Okay, so now I explained what the problem is. Now let's switch to why does it even matter? Why chirality, homochirality matters? We can explain this in two different arguments. First, it's an it's a no brainer that the origin of life didn't happen due to a simple chemical reaction. It probably was a consequence of a series of reactions like the network you see on the left. And once chirality emerges in such a network, if you cannot figure out chirally selective synthesis, you start throwing out half of your products. This quickly gives yields converging to zero in several steps because the yield of a network is the individual yields of each step multiplied. This is the arithmetic argument forcing us to figure out chirally selective synthesis as early as possible. And the second problem is that it's experimentally shown that you cannot polymerize RNA from a chirally mixed pool of nucleotides. The presence of other isomer inhibits the polymerization of the other. Therefore, Without achieving a homochiral state, one cannot realize the RNA role. And we can divide the homochirality problem in two different parts. The first part is the symmetry breaking part, where a symmetry breaking agent, likely a physical one, breaks the initial equilibrium between the isomers and induces a small chiral excess in one direction. So far, we don't really care about what direction it is, but it introduces a small chiral excess, a bias in one direction. And then we can chemically amplify the small imbalance that we generated by the physical agent. And through this amplification, we can generate the homochiral state. And what I mainly focus on is the first part where the initial symmetry breaking happened how it happened, why it happened, where it happened. And most importantly, what was responsible. 
Now we came to our candidate as a chiral agent, electrons with well-defined spin orientation. So by analogy, I can explain what these are and why they can be chiral. So think of the electric field and the charged particles. Just as electric field orients charged particles, magnetic field interacts with particles through their spin. So electrons under magnetic field orient their spin along the direction of the field. And an electron moving along the direction of its spin provides a field around itself, which traces out the helical path. And the handedness of this field is defined by the spin orientation of the electron, or more precisely, the overlap of its spin on its velocity. So if an electron is spin polarized along its propagation direction, depending on that overlap, you can generate either a right-handed field or a left-handed field. So spin polarized electrons have a chiral property. And because of this property, they interact with chiral molecules selectively. So the takeaway message is electrons can be a chiral agent. So this is actually an experimentally demonstrated fact. It looks like this chiral effect is a small one that is not possible to be realized at room temperature in a mixed system, say in solution. However, it's actually experimentally demonstrated that chiral molecules uh, filter out a stream of electrons ejected from a surface based on their spin orientation. And this is actually a room temperature effect. And the energy scales of this selective interaction is much larger than the room temperature. And spin polarizations of up to 80% have been realized in these systems. So it is shown experimentally that chiral molecules, molecular chirality, interacts with the electron spin. So motivated by the strong interaction of chirality in electron spin, we suggest doing chemistry with spin polarized electrons. So this is a different idea than using electrons, using chiral molecules as a filter of electron spin. Now we will use the electron spin to filter out a chirality. And imagine, a reductive synthesis of a molecule B from molecule A in which the reduction is done by spin polarized electrons. As seen here, if a chiral molecule A is reduced by a spin polarized electron, then one can chirally enrich the reduction product B based on the electron spin. Because this reduction, if the molecule A is chiral, is going to be selectively happening. And one of the isomers is going to react faster. Therefore, one can generate a chiral excess in the B through a kinetic selection. This is the main idea. So now we can turn back to geochemistry and ask ourselves, how can we find these electrons? Because so far I explained what the chiral agents are and how they interact with molecular chirality, but we haven't yet seen where do the electrons actually come from? Turns out that if you shine light on magnetic minerals, such as iron oxides, you can get spin polarized electrons. And this is not a very interesting observation, obviously, because if you have a magnetic mineral and it is magnetized under a field, it can be Earth's field, it can be lightning, it will have a bias along the direction of the field under which it's magnetized. And because of the conservation of angular momentum, if you eject electrons from that surface, the electron spin will follow the magnetization of the mineral. So we consider a surface lake, which was once rich in dissolved iron. And it is known that under anoxic conditions, iron oxides like magnetite or hematite form as autogenic sediments under the bottom of these lakes as shown here. And these sediments carry the magnetization of the field under which they're magnetized. So the symmetry is broken by the field magnetizing these minerals. 
and the magnetized minerals provide the carrier electrons when they're exposed to UV radiation through photoelectric effects. So we argue that the reduction chemistry near magnetic surfaces using the photo ejected electrons can be chirally selective. The last question is, when does it happen? Of course, the easy answer is during periodic chemistry, during RNA roll. But we can do better and suggest a more specific reaction. There's a very well-known prebiotic reaction for the synthesis of nucleotides, the so-called pavner cytolent lens type of pavner cytolent lens type synthesis. And nucleotides are, are the building blocks of RNA. So this is a very important reaction if you want to figure out the origin of homochirality. And this reaction uses the first chiral sugar, glyceraldehyde, as its reagent. And the chirality of this molecule turns out that is dictated by the chirality of the precursor nitrile. And if one realizes a, an anti enrichment in glyceraldehyde, the chirality of this molecule directly affects the chirality of the nucleotide precursor and therefore the nucleotides. The interesting thing here is obviously this molecule is chiral, so is its precursor. And it's synthesized through a reduction reaction from the nitrile. So meaning that this sugar forms when a chiral molecule absorbs electrons. So it's exactly like the scheme that we propose. So we consider the reductive synthesis of glyceraldehyde, the one that is in the red box, as the most suitable reaction to apply our idea. And if this reaction works, then the chirality of the glyceraldehyde will dictate the chirality of the nucleotides and the other molecules in the reaction network. So the last part is what have we done so far and what we're what we're doing. So our collaborators have previously shown that electron spin can be a chiral agent out of the prebiotic context with the reaction shown here, which was done on a magnetized surface as well. And um, we also replicated this and show that from a racemic precursor, we can generate chiral excess without using any chiral agent, but actually using spin polarized electrons. So now the ongoing project is to do the similar synthesis. However, this time for this prebiotically relevant reaction that I just described. And we are working on this reaction where glyceraldehyde is synthesized by the precursor nitrile on magnetite surfaces. So here are the main takeaways. Electrons can be chiral agents. And chiral electrons can induce chirally selective synthesis of biomolecules. And one can find these electrons because magnetic minerals upon UV radiation can provide chiral electrons. All right, so I'm done here. Thanks for listening to me. And I should thank Dimitar Sasselo, my advisor, and Simon's Foundation because they're funding us very generously. And I also like to thank my collaborators at Weizmann Institute, the group of Ron Nauman. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me at my email shown here. Thank you for listening.